Free State Premier Sisin Dombela is expected to arrive in Yakharasfontein in a short while. Affected residents are being evacuated to nearby farms. Humanitarian organizations have also arrived to provide aid to victims. Karabo Khao is uh, a Free State DA member who joins me now for an update and uh, their take on that situation. Karabo, good afternoon and, and thank you for your time. What, what can you tell us about this situation in Jagas Fontaine um, from your understanding from, you know, the activists in the area? What's the picture looking like? What exactly happened and, and what do we know about the state of play right now? Good afternoon, Tulas, and good afternoon to everybody at home viewing. Tulas, before we get to the state of the situation, let's first understand the history of the dam. The dam was built in 2012, which is 10 years ago. It was built by the Itumelan Community Trust. And even upon the building of this dam, members of the community of Jachas Bandain already raised concerns to ask the first primary question, what happens should this dam collapse? Because a few meters from the dam are residences, people's homes and homes that are currently affected now that have been washed away by this dam. These are concerns that were raised to the local municipality, the Kopan and local municipality, the Kharib district municipality and the Free State Provincial Government with absolutely no answer altogether. So that's the first thing we need to, to clear out. And currently, we've seen generally three people are dead. Over 20 people and more have been diagnosed with hypo hypothemia, while still four people are missing. These are lives of human beings, too, as women are pregnant, are being taken to hospitals, grandmothers and grandfathers who, who, who can barely walk themselves to any destination have now also been affected altogether. This is a situation that... As the Democratic Alliance, we refuse to accept as um, as a mere uh, um, hazard or a disaster altogether. The municipality, the local provincial, the, 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 the district and the provincial government were supposed to have taken measures to ensure that should such instances occur, there's, there's a plan into action. But currently, as we know, the free state provincial government doesn't even have a disaster management center to begin with. So they, they weren't even aware of any potential risks that could have been there. Yeah. So um, the, concerns, the concerns we have lie with the mining authorities and the National Department of Mineral Resources because they have a responsibility to have regular checks on this dam. And it would be interesting to know when last did they visit this dam to, to ensure that the lives of people wouldn't be at risk as they are right now. So you've touched on a number of things and a number of issues, Karabo, but one thing from what you just said really stands out for me. Um, you say the dam was built in 2012, so it's only 10 years old uh, from what you are telling me. That's extraordinary. Any dam, any structure meant to retain water should not be collapsing after just 10 years if it was built properly. Exactly our point as well, and which is why we demand to know through the, from the local authorities, how did they, one, not see this coming? Two, what maintenance plan did they have in place to ensure that the lives of people are at risk? And three, from the local municipality as well, together with the provincial government, what, what, what conversation has been in place with the, the said um, um, mining authorities to ensure that their preventative measures put in place? Particularly because, again, I emphasize to us, residents of this community had been, been asking this question, that we live with meters away from a dam should this dam collapse we're going to lose our lives and today people are dying and nobody has been able to give a clear-cut answer to that mm. and you say that it was built by the itumelen community trust are these the people who are responsible for that mining activity and therefore needed to develop this kind of infrastructure so it was it was a, a community trust that was done by the members of the community through um, the Jahas Contain Developments Pty Ltd. Um, this was done through De Beers altogether because previously there was some sort of infrastructural concerns from members of the community regarding the dams altogether. There's quite a long history regarding that. So it would be interesting to have a conversation with um, with those people there. Um, but what remains 
true is that for years, the Democratic Alliance have been having a conversation with the provincial government, warning them of potential cases such as these ones of disasters, where the provincial government won't have the funds, one, or two, the personnel on the ground, or the personnel necessary and the human resource to, to tackle such issues. And we've also advised um, the provincial government to please have a conversation with the Western Cape Department, uh, the Western Cape government because they have been dealing with disasters pretty well. They've even helped KZN throughout their crisis with flooding just now a few weeks ago. So we know that Premier Ndombela, MEC Dukwana, and the entire provincial executive team does not have a disaster management center, does not have a disaster management plan in place, which is why currently everybody is running around like headless chickens trying to figure out what to do when people are losing their lives. Mm. So you raise a number of questions in the statement that you have issued uh, today, uh, Karabo. And, and among the key issues is, is your sort of thinking forward about what the ongoing impact will be from this disaster. And, and, and what is your initial reading of we're dealing now with three people uh, that are dead and a number of people that are missing, a number of people who are injured, people taken to hospital, etc., homes damaged, and the likes, but what's, what's likely to be the impact going forward from your assessment of the situation? The, the impact is beyond just the lives that are currently affected in terms of health, impacted in terms of health, because homes are now, the, the people's homes are washed away. Farmers have been impact, have, have been negatively uh, um, impacted by this. They've lost livestock, we've lost crop, and everybody knows that the free state depends heavily on the agricultural sector to have our economy moving forward. So our request and our demand to the provincial government is for them to ensure that one, proper housing allocations within areas that aren't as dangerous as the current areas are, are allocated to members of the community. We need to ensure that everybody's brought to safety and that we employ as many troops as possible to, 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 to be able to one, securely monitor what is happening on the ground, and two, be able to come up with um, future plans to ensure that such dangers aren't there altogether. But again, this can only happen if all hands are on deck. We understand that the provincial government is completely compromised, source the necessary um, help that you can get elsewhere nationally and within the Western Cape. But we we'll also call on um, on civil society and NGOs all together to please, let's all go and ensure that we support these communities. Um, they no longer have homes. People need food. People need more shelter. People um, basically need ba basics of, of just getting through and the necessary yeah. counseling to solve this trauma. And Karabo, when you hear that uh, disaster management center uh, is being activated and the disaster management plan is being activated, and I, I know you've touched on this a few times in our conversation, but realistically, what does that look like? Is there anything to, to, that's at least a base to say, at the very least, they will have a couple of ambulances, a couple of, I don't know, stretchers and tents and, I don't know, one or two helicopters? Attila says, so you can see I'm, 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 I'm giggling here, I'm chuckling because it sound, it, it, it's like a dream because it's, it, the, the provincial, the free state provincial government doesn't have the technical capacity to get any of that done. The status report we've requested from the province regarding all of those listed items there is still foggy. They too don't know where to start. They don't know how many people they can be able to have. They don't know how many ambulances they can get there um, in time. Um, if you've seen footages on the ground and have been in communication with me, um, with, um, with with members of the community throughout the day, the, the police and ambulances have also been struggling to gain access into these affected areas because there's, there's no plan altogether. So pretty much it, it, what I'm saying to you right now is what is happening in the disaster management center. The Free State Department, the Free State Provincial Government, led by Premier Sinsi Tombella and copter by uh, um, MEC, uh, MEC Duguana, have no clue what to do. And this is why the Democratic Alliance is pleading with the government to say that now is not the time for us to pay politics for people's lives. Reach out to the Western Cape, Western Cape government, Premier Ellen Windy and Minister 
Anton Bridal have said that they are available to help given that they have the experience necessary to tackle such issues. Reach out to them before it is too late. There's way too much damage that's already been done. People's lives are being lost. Their lives are being interrupted. Mm. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you for um, you know, your updates and, and, and sharing your insights with us here on ENCA. That's a member of the Democratic Alliance, a provincial legislature member there, Karabo Khao, uh, weighing in on that uh, disaster that has occurred in Jakarsfontein.